Isaiah chapter 50, the epistle to the Philippians, the 50th book of the Bible. Thus saith the Lord, Where is the bill of your mother's divorcement? Jeremiah 3 8 and Hosea 2 14. Whom I, God, have put away. Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Now what God is saying to Israel here is, okay, give me the paperwork that says that we are divorced. That we are no longer married. Bring them up. Show them. Or, if, if, if you had a debt and I sold it, on you. I sold you to, you know, like if you go to the hospital and you get a bill and you don't pay that bill, the creditors will buy that bill and the hospital is no longer obligated. They've been paid by somebody. You got to go pay somebody else. But well, God is saying, listen, where is the paperwork that I sold you to somebody else? Where is divorce? Papers, the court orders, that I am not married to you anymore. Show them. And there is none. And for those people that say God is all through with, the, with Israel, if you're dealing with those people, bring them to Isaiah 50 and say, okay, show us the divorce papers or the creditor's papers that God is all done with them. Because a marriage is not finished until death or divorce. Even though Israel has committed adultery by false gods, with false gods, with other nations, a man is allowed in the Bible if his wife has, has been with another man, that is grounds for a biblical divorce. And yet, the husband is given the opportunity to say, "You know what? No, I, I'm not going. I'm not going to divorce her. I'm going to forgive and forget." Now Joseph's thinking that Mary had, had had relations with another man and it wasn't. She became a pregnancy by the Holy Spirit of God. He was going to do a third option. He was just going to put her away silently and quietly. For the law states an adulterer and the adulteress shall be stoned. When you're talking about the bill of divorcement here, it's the ending of marriage. And God says, where is, where is the papers? Where are the people that I sold you to? You mentioned Babylon. No, he didn't sell them to Babylon. Egypt. No, he redeemed them out of Egypt. Matter of fact, in Egypt, he became the creditor. He redeemed them. So we have the documentation where God has redeemed this nation in the book of Exodus by all the signs against Pharaoh and his nation of the passing of the Red Sea that the waters opening up and dry land. And then with the new children of Israel after the 40 years as Joshua parts the Jordan River on dry land, we have the record of the paper that says that God has redeemed that nation for himself. All right, where is the paperwork that God has? Okay, here's a group of people. You take over. Behold, for your iniquities have ye sold yourselves. It is not God. God didn't sell them. They sold themselves. God did not sell, sell Israel into Babylon. Their own sins put them in Babylon. They are in the condition they are today, not because God has given up on them, 
because they have sold themselves not to believe that Jesus Christ is their Messiah. If God had given a divorcement, I'm not, I am not into wife beating. I don't believe you correct your wife. If God had sold them over to a creditor, the tribulation period is God chastening, using the rod like a father would a son, because of their disobedience. Had God divorced them, had God sold them over to the creditor, God would have no right to put upon them the tribulation in Jacob's trouble. But being their father, He has that right to correct his child. Or the Bible says you're a bastard. And for your transgressions is your mother put away. Put away. You know, there are times in a marriage, talk about a divorce here, you're at odds. You're in an argument. You go different rooms. But that's not a divorce. That's not going to the legal authority and say, listen, I, I want this and all this marriage. That's just at odds. Wherefore, when I came. When God came, was there no man? When I called, God speaking, was there none to answer? Well, Isaiah said, uh, send me. Is my hand shortened at all that it cannot redeem? Look at God, look at what he's saying to this nation. I came to you. Who came to me? I've called you. Who answered? Am I so limited I can't redeem? I can't buy you back? Or have I no power to deliver? Behold, at my rebuke, I dried up the sea. Here we go. The Red Sea. I made the rivers a wilderness, the flinty rock. Their fish stinketh, because there is no water, and they dieth for thirst. God can give water, and God can take away water. There are three elements of, of, of rain that God can do in life. Number one, give you no rain at all. You don't want that. Drought, desert, no food, no crops, dearth in the land. He can give you exactly as much water as needed for vegetation, for animals, for human consumption, for cooking. Or he can just give you too much water and just wash it all away. That's the power of God. I mean, water is too... I'm trying to think of the word. Two gases. Oxygen and hydrogen. And yet together it makes a liquid that is life essential, that is needed, and God made it. Scientists have yet to prove where water came from, but they say man came from the water. 
single cell, double cell, and D cell, and D and C cell, and AA cell, and triple A cell, and here we are with our electronics, I guess, or something like that. God has power over the water, yet the transgressions and their iniquities, God can't do nothing. Is God limited? Yes, by our sins. God cannot forgive you of your sins if you don't ask him to forgive you. God cannot pardon if you're not guilty. If myself and Governor Scott of Florida walked into the prisons of Florida today, And ask every man in the prison, say, are you guilty? And yes, will, will the governor give a man a pardon? A no answer, I'm not guilty. I, I'm not, you can't be pardoned. God is saying, listen, I want to redeem you, and I can't. It's not that my arm is short. It is your fault. And maybe one of the cases your prayers are not being answered because of your sins and your iniquity. It's not that, I mean, you try to say God doesn't have the power to answer prayer? He may be saying, he may be not saying yes. He may not be saying no. He may be saying not now because of what you're doing. God can clean Israel or Judah, where we are right now. God can clean Judah up right now in Isaiah 50 if they would just repent and get right and get rid of all their false gods and the imagery and the idolatry we've been reading about for three or four chapters. Exactly what Jacob did. When he gathered the family around, he gathered all those idols and idolatry and buried them under the tree and said, okay, let's go back to Bethlehem. What else can God do? I clothe the heavens with blackness. Ask someone down there, down south with NASA, why are the heavens black? I know the answer, and I haven't been to college. I've been to Bible college, seminary, and I know why the heavens are black, because God said they're black. Genesis 1. He divided the light from the darkness. And he called it the firmament. Genesis 1. I make sackcloth their covering. So God is telling them, I made the universe. You see that black out there? Yeah, I see that black. I did that. You like that? That was a black crayon. Took me a lot of black crayons, but I did it. Now, if I can do that, Israel, if I can do that, Judah, what do you think I can do with you? The other night when we got out of prison, we just looked up and the sky was just perfectly, at that moment, the sun was setting up, and there's just stars and planets out there. In the area where the prison there's not much light, not much city light. It was just beautiful. And you look up there, and God did that. You look up at those skies, and you can see stars, and some of those stars, you know, they say they look like lions and giants, and uh, okay. okay uh, but you can see planets, you can see the moon. Now, if I can do that, what do you think I can do with you? The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned. God gives you a learned tongue. That I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. That was not Job's three friends. That was a liar. Who finally spoke to Job. 
he wakeneth morning by morning he wakeneth my ear to hear as the learn the Lord God has opened my ear and that's funny because when Jesus Christ came God shut their ears so they couldn't hear why why couldn't Israel see and hear they had rejected Jesus Christ as God as Messiah if Jesus Christ and God did that to the Jews what do you think he does to Jehovah Witnesses who deny that God is Jesus and Jesus is God that's why they don't even use a Bible and the Bible they got is perverted I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. Israel, now in Isaiah, are turning back. They are not listening. They won't listen to Jeremiah. And they sure didn't listen to Jesus. Because what did he get? He got a cross. What? His own disciples didn't even get. Not so, Lord, I won't deny you. <clears throat> you, realize Jesus, you realize Peter was rebuking God all those times? Oh, no, you're not going to wash my feet. Peter, you're talking to God. <laughs> I. Now watch, what, now, watch what God does here. We're talking about God. Thus saith the Lord, right? Where is the bill of the most, the most divorcement? And I made the heavens, I made the earth, right? Right, Mr. Jehovah Witness? Pass this video on to a Jehovah Witness. We're talking about God the Father, the creator of Genesis 1. I gave my back. Who is that? Who is that, Mr. Jehovah Witness? That's God, thus saith the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. You know, of all religions, and I'm going to be careful with this one, 99% of Jehovah Witnesses will burn in hell. They don't believe him because you cannot be saved and say that God is not Jesus and Jesus is not God. When the Bible says he is, when he said, I am. I gave my back to the smiters. That's the cat of nine tails upon the back of Jesus Christ. And my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. His beard. This is all Psalms 129 verse 3. I hid not my face from the shame and spitting. This is Jesus Christ before uh the Sanhedrin, and this is Jesus Christ before the Roman soldiers. For the Lord God will help me. That's how he got through it all. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint. Luke 9.51 And I know that I shall not be ashamed. He was never ashamed of what he'd done. He was never ashamed of what they had done for him. And upon the cross, one of his dying words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And when he realized it was all finished, it is finished. When everything was to be completed that he was to complete, he gave up the ghost. And they buried him. <laughs> you, know, you know the funny, I don't want to mean funny, but you know the funny story about Jesus called, he, he told him, he said, didn't he tell him, he said, I can call down, I don't know, 12 legions of angels, was it? And destroy the whole earth. You know what's funny? 
I, I don't know. God says they all have names, though. I don't know. I don't want to give He calls down two of his agents. Hey, Fred, Charlie, whatever. Come here. Yes, Lord Jesus. I got a job for you. Yes, Lord Jesus. Go in that tomb and wait for the women to come. I told him I could send angels. So I'm going to send a couple of angels. And you, you give them this message when they come. And what did the two men on the road in the anus say? Well, we heard these women speaking that they've seen visions and visions of angels, and they didn't even believe them. The Lord has opened my ear, uh, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. That wasn't the people in Jesus' time. You would figure 400 plus people that say, hey, I just heard Jesus is alive. Hey, did you hear Jesus is alive? In the castle, and they say, did you hear Jesus? And you know what they did to the disciples? And when the apostles in the book of Acts, they beat them, put them in jail. Why don't you preach in this name Jesus around here? And they weren't ashamed, and they glorified that they were able to suffer for Jesus and the word. Paul was never ashamed. I've been in prison. I've been in prison where I walk through the bathrooms. There's shame in a prison bathroom. In the showers and the potties. There's no dividers. Paul was handcuffed to a Roman attorney and everything he'd done was done from that soldiers. Yet he preached the gospel. He is near that justifies me. Who will contend who will contend with me? The Sanhedrin. Pilate. Herod. The nation of Israel. Satan. But they lost. Let us stand together. There's Isaiah 118. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Luke 4, Matthew 4. If thou be the Son of God. Come on, let's go up on the pinnacle of the temple. Come on, let's go look at all the nations. And you know, Jesus went with Satan. Wait, and let's go. All right. Nothing better to do. Got to fulfill the scriptures. Oh, that's all you got, Satan? That's it? How many nations is that? That's all? Well, I'll tell you what. Let's see what the scripture has to say. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't go back. He went forward to Calvary. Behold, the Lord God will help me. That's how Jesus got through it. That's a verily, verily, that's repeated twice. Who is he that shall condemn me? That's repeated. Lo, they shall wax old as a garment. The moth shall eat them up. But Jesus Christ is still alive, seated at the right hand of the Father today, waiting to come get his bride. And how many, how many people have now been engraved? A numeral number. Who is among you that feareth the Lord? I do. Romans 10, 13. And obeyeth the voice of his servant. His servant. That's the Lord Jesus Christ we read a couple chapters ago. That walketh in darkness. I walked in darkness. And have no light. I had no light one day. I was alone without hope and without God going to hell. In fact, I was in hell according to John chapter 3. I was already condemned for hell. You let him trust in the name of the Lord. Romans chapter 10. For with the heart man believes on the righteousness, with the mouth confesses is made unto salvation. Acts 
Twelve fourteen. There is no other name given by men whereby you must be saved. And stay upon His God. That way, it says the name of the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. You say, leave the Jehovah Witnesses alone. No, I won't. Because they're coming into my neighborhood, going to my neighbors and trying to damn their souls. I won't leave them alone. And I'll stick my finger in their face and tell them they're going to a place that they don't believe. And when they get there, they'll be shocked that it's there. They are liars. Jesus never came back four times. There's more than 144,000. Stay upon his God. That means stay. Don't go to false gods. Don't go to religion. Don't go to yourself. Don't go to man. Stay upon his God. And that's what Jesus Christ did. He stayed upon his God, which is Father. Behold, all ye that kindle a fire, that compass yourselves about with sparks. Ooh, you know, you sit around a campfire. Walk in the light of your fire. Mark. Walk in the place of your fire. The fire you live. And in the sparks that ye have kindled, this shall ye have of my hand. Ye shall lie down in sorrow. Now, I don't have any idea what verse 11 means. Walk in your own fire that you kindle. Maybe just, I don't know, I'm not even going to try to explain that. We're going to leave that one just like that. We're done with another verse, another chapter, and about the Lord Jesus Christ, the Creator, God, and His human life here. And He went to the cross and was never ashamed.